Welcome to Move Your Mind. My name is Nick Brax, and this is a podcast where we have real conversations with real people and give real advice. We all know how big of an issue mental health is in society, and we also know that it's a huge issue when it comes to men. There's a lot of awareness in the world now, but a lot of men are still in the dark about what to actually do, how to make the right step forward, how to support each other. A lot of us just don't know where to begin. Most men want to make these changes and work on themselves, but they're just overwhelmed. And often the solutions that are offered to us are just band-aids. To build a community and do deep work on ourselves is how we can make long-term change. I really connected with my next guest. He's been through a similar journey to myself. He's done the work, endlessly working on himself, and he's helping to empower men all over the world to take real change in their lives. Elliot White is a men's coach who helps men achieve fulfillment in all areas of life, from relationships to fatherhood and business. Thank you so much for supporting the podcast. If you'd like to learn more, you can go to nickbrax.com or you can purchase the Move Your Mind book at nickbrax.com slash book. Elliot, thank you so much for making the time, mate. It's great to have you on here and appreciate you reaching out and, you know, talking to someone in, in my, my homeland in Australia. So, uh, yeah, it's great, great to meet you. Oh, thank you so much for having me on the show. It's an absolute honor to be having a beautiful conversation with another great man that is doing excellent work on this planet. So yeah, it's a pleasure to be here. Appreciate it, mate. And no, I, yeah, same here. I like, I, I say, I've said it so many times, but my favorite thing about doing this podcast is getting to meet people like yourself and just sit here and have, you know, these conversations, these sort of, you know, very focused conversations that you just wouldn't normally get to do you know yeah. in day-to-day life so and technology yeah. allows us to do that so no it is a, it's a really great thing isn't it yeah it's a beauty beauty of of having a podcast being able to speak to many people around the world but have different values perspectives and very interesting open conversations so i'm sure what we've got is is hopefully going to provide a lot of value for your audience as well so fingers crossed (laughs) i'm sure it will i'm sure it will uh so are you speaking of our audience are you able to give a just a background on yourself and you know the work you're now doing and how you came to be doing that just to give give our audience a bit of a overview of uh of, of who you are yeah definitely so um For me right now, I'm currently living in Australia, Byron Bay. So you can probably hear my by my English accents, like how did he actually get there? So I moved over six years ago with my incredible wife. I've got a beautiful little baby boy who's just over one years old. His name is Wild and he's absolutely amazing. And the work that I facilitate is mostly for men. So men's work uh, within Australia and, and globally, I do have a couple of clients across um, other countries as well. But what I actually do, I'm a psychic healer. So uh, I have psychic abilities to be able to tune into anyone and everybody that actually wants to remove emotional wounding and improve every area of their life. So if they have having emotional blocks in business, relationships, family, absolutely anything that's in their in their reality, I uh, have the ability to tune into that and remove the emotional block so that no longer happens for them. But how did I actually get there? So how, how, how did I get to becoming a psychic healer, becoming a, a, a you know, a, a healer on this planet of, of helping men and, and bringing men into the divine masculine rather than the, the toxic masculinity, which is out there. And the truth is I, as a, a a younger adult and a younger male, I had all of the the toxic traits that you could possibly imagine. So going from from school in high school, I was the the biggest, most confident, bubbly young man you could possibly imagine. So I was the sportiest, I was the loudest, I was the happiest. I, you know, looked like it. I had it all together externally. So you know, I had the body, I had the fitness, I had all of the the talent and I would walk into any room and make everybody laugh. And that actually happened and and continued to to unravel into my early 20s. And I would always feel like I needed to to be the funniest, to be the loudest. But also at the same time, 
I needed to to win and be competitive and and yeah, almost be the best in in, in every mm. single area. And externally, if you saw me in my early twenties, you'd probably go, "Wow, this guy's got it all together." So I started in the health and fitness industry, helping uh, everyone, helping lots of people. And I was I was there for for twelve years, and I've won multiple awards as international personal trainer of the year, all of these different things, and. I've, you know, ran marathons and got personal best in those types of things and top 10 wins in Australia. So lots of amazing accolades. But Nick, the, the, the thing is that as men, we're driving towards these accolades. And a, a lot of the time, I'm sure a lot of men can can relate to this is where we want the, the bigger business. We want the achievements. We want the certificates on the wall. We want the, you know, the women, we want the, the money, we want the fame, we want the significance, but we never actually feel the love and the validation for, for absolutely any of it. And for, for me, it was, it was an endless road of needing mm -hmm. the validation and needing the love. And as I said, externally for me, between the ages of 18 and 25, it, my life, like it looked great. It looked great because I had everything together, but internally I was actually, I was broken and I was lacking in confidence. And at the weekends I, I was consuming drugs and alcohol and the toxic behaviors that I actually had as a man was, you know, breaking down lots of my relationships with my family, with my friends and with my, the partners that I had at the time. And the behavior <laughs> I could dive into so many different types of behaviors that I actually did, but in terms of the unhealthy behaviors as a man, I would say that I had pretty much all of them. And it got to a point in my life where I was at the age of 25 and I was like, I, I actually met my wife um, who's obviously my girlfriend at the time. And I said, she is the one like in terms of the felt sense of of what she is doing to my heart to my body to the way that i feel this is this is different compared to you know the multiple women that and relationships that i've had in the past and i was like i do not want to let this one go this one mm. this one has to i have to change and i looked at all of my behaviors and i was like in terms of alcohol, in terms of the way I treat people, in terms of the, the the way that I'm driving, the energy that I'm driving from, this needs to actually change. So I started to read books on personal development. I started to listen to podcasts, you know, podcasts like yourself. And I started to invest in courses and, and yeah, build better habits and, you know, um, find myself a little bit more. And on, on the, the three year journey that I was doing that, it was what I actually did was I created another level of my facade. So another personality where I, it was me looking like I was doing the work, looking like I was improving myself and going, yeah, well, I've read these New York Times bestsellers. I've read these podcasts. And yes, my 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 behaviors were improving i was a better partner i was a better human i was i was definitely more confident in things but even though i was reading the podcast and going to the best coaches seminars and investing lots of money i was still feeling this lack of lack of love lack of worthiness lack of confidence and also there was still behaviors and and urges and pulses that were were under the surface for me and i knew that like yes i was able to control these behaviors of not wanting to cheat and not wanting to go out and take drugs and not wanting to you know be an idiot and be toxic and unhealthy but how could i actually change those for for, for life and completely mm -hmm. remove them from my body so that's when i started healing so i invested in it in, in a in a healing coach about three years ago. And when you remove the emotional wounding, you completely t take away any behaviors that are driving that. So rather than controlling the behavior and going, yep, I'm aware of that. I can understand why I'm doing that because of this from the past. So that's what a lot of kind of the work is. It's like, look back in your past, 
have a look at the relationship with your mum and dad and then or any other relationship when you were younger this is why you behave that way so now control that whereas mm -hmm. for me yeah. i was like okay how can i completely remove it so on my healing journey over the past three years i've removed almost if not as many as possible emotional blocks you know from from my childhood and you know some some traumatic some not traumatic every person on this planet has emotional injuries it's just up to us for to have the willingness and the responsibility to look there to go there and to feel those emotions from the past so from that moment when i started to remove all of my emotional blocks and remove the conditioning that was placed upon me from from childhood every person on this planet actually has their own psychic abilities so my psychic ability started to come online. I started to be able to channel everything that was going on for me, to be able to tune into any other person on this planet. And that's where I started to facilitate the work that I do now. So the, the men that I actually work with, like come, come to me with looking to improve in every area. So business, relationships, family life, children, being a better father and role model. But I actually tune into to see what the emotional block is from, from childhood to, to get them there. So yeah, that's a, a little bit about me in a nutshell. Um, and I'm sure you can kind of dive in and, and, and pick off some, some questions from there as well. But I hope that gives the, you know, the, the best answer for, for, for me. No, fantastic answer. And thank you for sharing that and being so open with it. And, there's a number of avenues I want to, you know, dive into from what you were talking about there. And on a personal level, you know, I relate to so many of the things you said where, you know, you sort of excel at things when you're younger, you've got this just constant, you know, it's a, it's, it's an urge that you just cannot fulfill. You can't get enough of where you just want more and on in every field and yep. there's no end to it. And it's, um, it's a confusing thing as well because you yeah. feel like, like you were saying, even when you start to try and make better decisions, that feeling, you know, doesn't completely go away. And it's like, okay, how do I, because I've taken a step forward in making that change, but I've still got this feeling and, you know, I don't want to have that feeling. I want to feel free. How do you get to that? So, and yes. on so many levels, what you're talking about, male, female it affects all of us, but especially for men, you know, this is something that where I think there's just not enough resource out there. So I think it's super important what you're doing. And a lot of the work we do is with men and they don't know where to go. So I guess like, is that a, is that a big thing you've seen? Like that just in general, men don't have the self-awareness about this or know where to begin to make these changes? Yeah. So when I, when I started to you know, truly heal myself and, 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 and actually remove the emotional blocks. That's when I landed for me in my purpose. And I was like, wow, the feeling that I have right now in my body, like I don't actually need anything externally. Like I, I, I still have external goals and, you know, houses and where we want to live and things like that. But if, if there was actually nothing, if I was sat on a rock in the middle of nowhere, the feeling is is the most important and the feeling that i have now and, and the love that i feel from my wife the love that i feel from from my child the love from that i feel now from my parents is absolutely undeniable and i've never felt that for for 30 years on, on, yeah. being on this planet so that's where i was like i need to and desire to help men feel exactly the same and well throughout history we we've been taught to suppress our emotions as men so it, it's the past thousands of years you know we have been the provider the protectors the hunters and it's not actually cool to to express to feel our emotions to let anybody become aware of it and you look at all of the the movies that are that are in in uh, in the you know the 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 movies movies right now it's like this action taker and the man that doesn't show any you know any weakness and 
all yeah. of everything in in society on social media and movies with our parents men are conditioned to just suck it up and 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 you know um drink a cu- sup a cup of cement and unfortunately because we've had the history of masculinity and the history of men for thousands of years that has been so much p- suppression we then have male role models that don't actually know how to you know allow the the sons and allow also daughters to 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 give them emotionally available like the their emotions to give them their yeah. undivided attention to give them their time and that's one of the biggest things that that's missing so you know myself and you the more we can bring men back into their hearts the more we can let them feel and the more we can let them you know remove everything that society has placed upon them and take their masks off that's where i feel they'll be able to bring up then a new level of of children in 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 you know in it's not just boys it it's daughters as well and um, being more emotionally available being more present and most importantly giving the heart to to their children as well yeah and that's the only way long term change happens if we really do pass it on and you know we learn these things ourselves we instill that in our children we learn it in school it's the only way we're going to make these long term changes so it is you know such an important thing what totally. are you able to describe some of the process of what you do with with the men and how how the psychic healing works yeah of course so when when i first get clients so i have a mentorship called sovereignty mentorships and and it's to allow men to to have sovereignty in every area of their life and what what society does is take away sovereignty from from everybody and that's probably another avenue that we can actually go down yeah but the sovereignty mentorship it's working with the health with the uh, relationship being a father in their business or career depending on if they you know up the corporate ladder or they've got their own business as well and the way that i work is we we pick one of those pillars so yeah. every single pillar is going to be transformed when they work with me so they have the ability when they finish working with me to have it all and mm. that's that's actually a hard perception it's like oh you can have money but then you can't be happy or you can have money but you can't be a good father and role model because you're never going to have the time i believe that yeah. you can have absolutely everything so when they come to me and say hey my biggest pillar that i want to work on is my relationship because my me and my wife never have intimacy or connection or anything like that i go great so i would then tune into every single thing that is going on for them so when i say thing it's usually an emotional injury or or wounding or multiple that's going on for them so if it's their relationship with their wife for example i would then tune into their relationship with their mother because any rela- any relationship problems for a man if it's a prob- if it's a relationship issue with a female it's usually their their relationship with their mother that actually needs healing and sometimes we can look mm. and go oh my mum was actually brilliant she you know she was very loving and stuff like mm. that but it's in the intricate details it doesn't mean that your mum was an absolute trojan and caused you loads of trauma <laughs> she could have dropped you off at school she could have lost you in the shopping center she could have said to you to go to your room like you're not allowed to feel your emotions like go you've been a bad boy all of these different types of things she could have give your older brother a lolly and not give you one there's loads of different examples yeah. where if we have not felt our emotions all the way through as a child between the ages of 0 and 10 that causes an emotional injury right then so which then later on in life if we've got the emotional injuries there that would affect then our relationship with our intimate intimate partners so if we've yeah. got emotional injuries around our mother we usually attract in similar behaviors from a, a woman that's wrapped up in a different skin so and this is quite hard to swallow because it's like no way i don't, like my mum and my partner are completely different but they are but then there's similar behaviors that's actually happening so if you had a controlling mother you probably have a controlling partner 
Um, so what I would do, Nick, is is tune in to every emotional injury that is at play for them in their relationship. And then I take them through processes. And this this could take, you know, weeks and uh, for them to heal all of their emotions and really resolve. So the most important part is they resolve their emotional injuries, they re is resolve their wounding. So once it's removed from uh, their body, they energetically don't have that in the relationship. So the partner usually rearranges their behavior, but certainly the most important thing is that there's no emotions that are stored in the body anymore that's yeah. no longer attracting that in. And that's the same in, in business. If they've got money problems, it's the same as a father, so they can open their heart. There's multiple different things as well. It's it's fascinating, and you know it's the kind of thing where exactly what you said. You can it can be so confusing when you start to when you you know you get older and you start to reflect on things and you think, hang on, I had amazing parents and they did all these things for me, and you know they're good people, but then you look at certain areas and they just may not have had and often don't have the emotional availability and awareness uh, that we might even have in our generation because they didn't get taught that, and then that has. A whole chain of events that can come from it so it's no one's fault but it's just a you know it's a really it's a shock when you start to realize that it's okay and we just you know there's and it's a relief as well that hey there's here's something here, here's an avenue that i need to heal in and there's actually a solution here because we just you know a lot of the time are oblivious to that and and there's so many levels to it but i guess like from what you're talking about there would you say a lot of addiction stems from you know whether it's sex addiction addiction to work success money fame whatever would you say that stems from not healing these different um emotional aspects of your life 100 percent, yeah 100 percent. anything that's driving an, an addiction is a emotional injury or multiple so it could be multiple that that's not been felt so if you feel a lack of worthiness if you feel a lack of love on multiple different occasions throughout your childhood and listen the, you know for myself i i've resolved hundreds of hundreds and hundreds of emotional injuries from from childhood and like i said there's some small like the majority are small and then mm. some are big big ones as well but if you felt a lack of love from being a child, mm. then depending on which way you, you can go, I'll, I'll use your examples. So a sex addiction is a man or a woman going out there, have the only way that they feel love and feel validation and feel significance is through sex. So that's where they're addicted to sex because they're addicted to being validated by another woman being validated by, you know, putting another woman on the tally list and they need to do it again and again and again to feed their addiction, which is feeding their lack of worthiness or lack of love from childhood multiple times. And then exactly the same, you, you know, you have a lot of men that are driven by significance and money and trying to get to the top of the ladder in terms of, um, yeah, being a CEO or just making more money constantly, but they feel a lack of love or a lack of worthiness from childhood multiple times. So then the, their need for significance is feeding the addiction of them. That's the only way that they get to re the receive love. If they're, if they're the yeah. big dog, if they're on the stage, if they're making loads of money, if they've got un loads of people underneath them, that's how they feel love. But you, you, this is the problem because that's a never ending journey. They're it's always going to be, yeah, 100%, yeah, 100%. That's the place that I used to, used to drive from um, with sex and, and, mm. with, and with, with business and with significance and awards. Like there was multiple yeah. things for me where I was constantly driving for it. Mm. And no matter how many women that I slept with, no matter how many <laughs> awards that I won, no, no matter how many, um, how much money I had in the bank, I would never feel worthy. I would never feel, I was like, fuck, like I've got these certificates on the wall. I've just worked my ass off and won, you know, international personal trainer of the year. I, I've, you know, 
got, a, again, I've got a beautiful wife or a beautiful girlfriend at the time, but I'm not feeling it. I'm not feeling the love and the validation. I'm not feeling the significance on the wall. Like as soon as I won the award a day later, it was like, okay, on to the next thing. What What's next? And yeah, the moment that I resolve the emotions within me, the moment that the need for that significance and the love uh, or also most importantly, the feeling of unworthiness and the feeling of the lack of love completely diminished once, once I got the resolve. And that's the, you know, it's the same with a lot of men and women out there that the, the reason why we're driving these un unhealthy behaviors is because we've got something unhealed from childhood. Thank you so much for supporting Move Your Mind. We're expanding the offerings of the organization and we're tailoring everything we do to suit you guys and to try and answer to all of your needs and the questions that you send in. The book is available globally. You can find all of the links at nickbrax.com slash book. And we've just released the Move Your Mind community. We've currently got a men's community group, a women's community group, a general group. We're gonna be lo loading up other groups and you can find all of the links at Move Your Mind me. This group's been created based on the needs of what we've heard and learnt throughout Running Move Your Mind. And we have live events, we've got courses, we've got huge amounts of value, the ability to share information, share ideas, work in groups together to, to grow and share your learnings, to learn about different topics. You get email reminders. There's a whole lot of features in there. We're constantly updating it and we're so excited to share it with you. You can find all of the information about it at moveyourmind.me. And, and I think a lot of the time, and you know, I've, I've had this fear as well, that if you heal these things, is it then going to take away that drive or is it going to prevent you from reaching the level of success you're aiming for? And actually, it, even though it feels that way, you're mo mo much more likely to achieve longer term far greater success because i think that obsessed that addictive behavior that need for more it's gonna maybe in the short term get results but it's not sustainable it's not going to lead to well thought out decisions if it you know it, if it's building a business i've experienced this when i was operating in that mode and you know you you can get lots of things done but nothing's done with depth and it doesn't have the backbone if it's a relationship you know you can see this happening I can see it with so many friends that, you know, I still have that are out chasing and doing this, diff, you know, and it's about obtaining women and it's this amazing thing and they're on a high and then it's over before you know it. And um, it's not going to lead to the success you want, even though it feels like it will. So if you can take that step back and heal and do that work, you're not going to need all of those other things, but you're actually more likely to get them anyway. You, you are 100% correct there. And, and Nick, there's been multiple times where I've been aware of, of a behavior. And listen, the, the behavior is an addiction, right? So we actually like the behavior. So we like, you know, as a man, we like going out in, in my perspective, like going out and sleeping with women. As a man, yeah. I like going out and winning awards. I yeah. like going out and making money. So when I started to resolve these emotions within me from childhood, there was some times where I'd be like, fuck, like, who am I going to become? Like, am I going to become this, um, <laughs> like this Buddha doing nothing and just like happy? And uh, like, do I, st am I still going <laughs> to drive for that? Am I still going to want to go to the gym? Do I still want to have the body? All of these different things. And yeah, I, I, I know that it can be scary. But if there's resistance and if there's fear, then on the other side of it is absolute abundance. And and that's what the, the key point, what you said is you can have it all. And that's why, you know, in the sovereignty mentorship that I have, you can have it all. It doesn't have to just be one thing. Yeah. And the most important fee feeling that I can describe is fulfillment. Yeah. So no matter what I did in my early 20s up until the age of probably 28, I was unfulfilled no matter what I did, no matter what I achieved, no matter what I had externally around me, I was still feeling that lack of fulfillment, that lack of abundance. And the moment I started to resolve all of you know my childhood wounding, that's when I started to feel the abundance. And also yeah. regardless of if I had it or not, you know, me and my wife, we've had some times of challenge like yep. last year when 
you know, our, our little boy was born, we had some really challenging times and we were under pressure financially. And there were, but at the same time, we were in this bubble of like, everything feels absolutely incredible. And that's yeah. the most important part. And I can't really describe the way that it feels apart from its fulfillment and abundance. But then also, I still definitely do have the drive to achieve, you know, from this, this world of, you know, external success, but it's not from a need of trying to fill a void. It's from yes. a, a need of, you know, providing for my family and, and setting up a, a new blueprint for, for my wife, for, for my children. And, you know, we're going to have multiple children. It's that place of like, it's, you know, pure desire uh, mm -hmm. of, of wanting to do that. And if it doesn't come, it doesn't matter because I know that we're going to have a, an incredibly happy life as well. But Nick also, it, it comes faster. <laughs> as well yeah. and like you said you can achieve it you can achieve it you absolutely can but the feeling along the way and the energy that's backing it is such a, a more loving energy than rather a needing energy as well well then you've you've got the choice to actually do things that are meaningful to you that you truly want to do because when we're operating from that place of i need it's like like you were saying before well if you succeed in something there's there's literally never ending avenues of what you can see, succeed in. You make, you become a millionaire. Well, there's billionaires out there. You, yeah. six, you become the best athlete in the world. Well, you're also not the biggest movie star or the most famous person in the world or whatever, yeah. like whatever the hell you do, there is no end to other things you can do. And it's a zero sums game because no one can win because it's not based on anything. So yeah. if you remove all of that, like you're saying, then you can have the freedom and just cut 90% of the noise out of your life and just yep. focus on only what's important. And then what comes out of that is success because then you yep. actually stick and do one thing really well. And I think that's something that in this day and age is harder than ever because our, you know, our attention is being mined by all of these social media um, companies, by the internet, by everything. And it's so hard to focus. So if you can learn how to do that, you know, that's, a much better avenue to to achieve success yeah. on so many levels so yeah, yeah i think it's i love what you just said and i just wanted to to add to that as well like what you said is absolutely perfect and the, the drop in that i just had is a lot of the time when we're actually driving for success we're driving from a place of um doing everything for other people so that's what actually changed for me. I was, mm. God, I was, I was, you know, all of the friendships that I had and everything that I was doing was to prove myself to other people, was to make other people happy. So we were, I was actually losing what I actually wanted and desired in life because yeah. all I was trying to do was just receive love and validation from everybody else. And when I started to resolve everything within me, that's when I needed to get to know myself on a new level of like, right, do I actually want to go for dinner with those people? No, I don't because I don't <laughs> enjoy the company. Right, I'm going to have to say no. Do I actually want to go to this uh, event? Do I actually want to have that phone call? Do I actually, you know, want to work with that client? Like all of these things. And it's like, no, I'm doing this from a place of if I do this, I'll get this. If I do this, I'll receive this from that person. But it's all for everybody else. And you're actually forgetting yourself in that moment. And yep. that's where, you know, from, from my life a couple of years ago, I started to rebuild from a place of like, what is it that I actually desire? And like I said, now, the fulfillment and the abundance that I, that I, feel in my life is absolutely incredible and yes there's been some friendships that have fell away but they were inauthentic and they, they were not from a place of truth and yes there's been some business relationships or, or you know all of these different types of things and there's been some big conversations with family members as well but the place that I'm in right now is an authentic place from a place of truth and love which is the most beautiful place to be in so I just wanted to add to that so thank you for that. I love that. I love that. Thank you for sharing that as well. No, but it's super interesting what you're saying. And, and I'm, I'm sure, you know, our listeners will, will get a lot out of this and a lot of our listeners are men. So they're, you know, this is so relevant what we're talking about here. So 
one of the other things I want to, which we've touched on, um, how 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 much how problematic do you think relationships are for men, and how important is it that we work on some of these things? Because you know some of the points like what you're talking about there, if you haven't done that work on yourself, and you know you're in a relationship and things start to get hard and you have that period. And I'm talking about this, you know, from my own experiences as well, you know, it's confronting and yet then you're thinking, you know, the easy option in your head is, oh, well, this is too hard. You know, I don't want this responsibility and it's meant to be all, you know, this um, ideal, you know, these idealisms you have about this again, from these Hollywood films and, mm -hmm. um, and pop culture that, once you're in love, it's meant to just be beautiful all day, every day, and yeah. it's effortless and you're in ecstasy and, you know, you're, you're chasing um, lust really, which is yep. just not sustainable all the time. But if you're addicted to that feeling, it's almost mm -hmm. impossible to sustain a relationship because as soon as things do become real and things come up, which they will have to, mm -hmm. the natural tendency will be just to run. So is that, yep. you know, a big thing that you deal with? 100 percent one it's probably the most common thing you know i i do deal with business and and being a father and stuff like that but i'd say maybe 60 percent of the time it's improving the intimate relationships because yeah as you say when we enter into a, an intimate relationship as a man it's usually lust and chemistry that's there so we've got all all the the chemistry that's running around and we're like this person this woman's the one she's amazing like the sex is amazing conversation's amazing absolutely brilliant we have so much fun but then after a year after two years potentially that's where the lust and the chemistry goes and what's mm. left then is <laughs> two people that need to work together and um, yeah, be, learn how to know how to be intimate for the rest of your life and learn how to know about communication and, and not shut down, not close your heart off. And again, there's the, we live in a society that it's been made very, very easy to run, made very, very easy to jump onto the next thing that looks all fluffy and shiny over there and the grass is greener. And it is very, very easy. And for yep. me, that was my you know, my lifespan of relationship was two years, I would always have another um, female ready. And then I'd leave the relationship, enter a new one, leave the relationship, enter a new one. And mm. the moment that I met my beautiful wife, Catrice, I was like, this needs to change. Yeah. But I still had the same urges and pulses. Yeah. Of, you know, two to three years in, I was like, I want to run. But the, the reason why we want to do that is because we're not we we have a closed off heart so we have a when we've had an emotionally unavailable father uh we've not been taught how to be in touch with our emotions so mm. the best thing for us is to shut down to suppress to not communicate uh maybe to work a little bit harder maybe to focus on alcohol and drugs maybe to find a hobby like golf or like driving and ignore our wife or our partner um, and then that's okay. So if we're the provider and the protector, mm. it's okay to not have the intimacy and the connection. It's actually normal now for people to simply in a relationship or a marriage to coexist in the same house. That is not normal, <laughs> mm. but that's what's normal in today's society. Um, and it's also normal to, to end your marriage as well and just, you know, pick up a new relationship. So yeah, the work that I facilitate for for men, like a lot of the time it is relationship problems. So they are resolving their emotions uh, with the relationship with their father, if, if, if they're closing off their heart, or if they're suppressing if they're trying to run and stuff like that. But if they're, they're bringing me relationship problems with their partner or, or wife, then they're resolving their relationship with their mother. And the more you resolve your own emotional injuries from your father and from your mother, the more your heart gets to open, the better a communicator will be, the, the softer you will become, the more present you will be as, as, as a partner. And also the more intimate you will be as well. So my, myself and my wife have been together for six and a half years and the, the love, the connection, the intimacy, the, the, the sex gets better and better and better. And I, and I, 
I actually, it baffles me yeah. that we actually, so she does the same work as me as well. So we're both on a, an incredible, you know, journey together, but it's actually baffling that we can, we can continue to have a more growing, incredible relationship, incredible sex life. And we're not just coexisting in the same house. And yeah, the, when I work with my male clients, they can sometimes be in relationships for 10 years, 15 years. And they're like, it's like we've got our spark back. It's like we've got, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. like when we first got together again. And it, it's got nothing to do with, you know, they're not eye gazing every night and they're not going out on date nights. What they're doing is resolving their own emotions, which are allowing them to open their hearts and connect again and simply yeah. connect again. Because a lot of the time when men close off their hearts, it's because they've, they have a fear of becoming hurt. They have a fear yeah. of, of, of becoming abandoned, becoming rejected, any of these things. So we would rather close our hearts off focus on other things than actually get hurt and fully open ourselves up to love and the pure love that's available. So I hope that answers your question. <laughs> it does. Very, very well worded. No, super, super well. And it's such a, it's so interesting because when you're having these feelings, when those things are coming up, whether any, any form of them, any, any kind of addiction or whatever it is, your every urge in your body is telling you that it's not because of that wounding you know you're feeling yes. like no it doesn't it, i just have this urge i have to like it seems like yep. how could it possibly be connected to mm -hmm. all of these other things it's just such a confusing thing yes uh but yeah it's it's just I, i'm just it's interesting it's fascinating yeah no I, I i absolutely love what i do but the most important part i love witnessing the change right in front of my eyes and you know when you resolve an, an emotional injury or wounding whatever it is it changes immediately it's not like yeah. oh things have to be rebuilt again you may have to rebuild yourself as a person um but the the connection and intimacy in a relationship and the feeling of you being a father that the the confidence as you walking into a room can be resolved in five minutes and you can mm. walk into a room and if you used to be embarrassed or self-conscious you can walk into a room with your shoulders back and be like hi guys i'm here my name's elliot do you and it's yeah. as, it's as incredible as that and when i hear you know success stories of my clients to say I can't believe I resolved this emotion. Then I went the next day into the office and I had the big conversation and there was no disruption or nervousness within me. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah this is the magic. This is the yeah. magic that gets to happen. So I, I love it. I absolutely love it. Um, that's, that's amazing, mate. Well, it's, it, yeah, I've, I've learned a huge amount from talking to you today and I'm sure our listeners will as well. So before we move into these final questions, um, yeah. I always ask the guest, what are, what are some of the things on a personal level you do just to maintain your mental health and well-being on a daily or weekly basis? Are there, are there things you can share with our listeners? Yeah, absolutely. So um, in terms of a physical, so the, the, the physical is I go to the gym four times a week and I do you know resistance training. I do recovery and ice baths and stuff like that. So you know, the colder, the better for me. And yeah. also in the sauna, I do hot and cold therapy, stuff like that. I eat um, mostly vegetarian food. Yes, a little bit of, of, of animal, but mostly vegetarian and all organic. So the clearer my mind, the clearer my channel and the clearer I am able to tune into, you know, myself, my son, my wife, but also my the, the clients that I have as well. So the cleaner my body is, the cleaner the, the work that I get to facilitate. Um, and then, yeah, lot, lots of walking, lots of things like that in terms of keeping my physical body in just prime condition. So I'm feeling amazing as well. Um, but most importantly, every single morning and throughout, you know, multiple times of the day, I, I tune in. And when I say I tune in, I channel to to God. And I, I ask God, what, what is it that I need to do today? What is it that I need to know? Is there anything that I need to 
um, a action? Is there any conversation that I need to have? And just whatever information comes through, I follow that guidance. I mm, follow, yeah. I follow those steps. And that could be, it could be a drop in for myself. Like, you know, have time off your phone today completely. And I, I'm like, well, that doesn't make sense because I need to post on social media or I need to do this or I need to go to the gym. But as long as I'm following that guidance, it keeps me in pristine condition. It keeps me being the best husband, keeps me being the best father, and also the best service that I can possibly be to my clients as well. So they're, they're you know, physical and, and keeping myself in shape, but then also channeling any guidance that comes through and following it every single day. I love that. I love it. Well, thank you for sharing that. So we're going to move in now to these. These are the final questions we finish every episode with. So these can be sort of shorter answers, whatever comes to mind. Amazing. Um, the first one is, what's the best childhood memory that comes to mind for you? Ooh, best childhood memory. I'm going to say it's, uh, so we used to go to the caravan um, in Wales back in, back in the UK uh, as a family holiday and this was before my my parents actually broke up and we would be on in the ocean and my two brothers would be there mum and dad would be there and can be completely I would say disconnected from the world but completely connected with the earth if, if that yeah. makes sense so no worries nothing on on your mind but playing, having fun by the ocean, bodyboarding, and just having the best time as, as a family unit. So that would be multiple memories over multiple years. We've, we've done that, uh, you know, in, in the caravan throughout the summer holidays. I love that. I love those kind of memories. Uh, what would you say is the biggest burden currently on mental health in society? <sighs> Big question, that one, Nick. That's a big <laughs> I would, one. <laughs> I would say the biggest burden is is people not fully understanding or, or there's not enough information on how to actually resolve emotions. There's a lot yep. of information on how to understand. And yes, there is, you know, there's more psychologists, there's more coaches, there's more counselors out there, but there's a bigger problem and continuing uh, a, a bigger problem with mental health. And it's because what's happening out there is people are simply understanding their behaviors, understanding their childhood, not actually getting to the root of the problem and ripping it out of their body. So because of this and because of you know the the personal development world and all of the new york times bestsellers <laughs> they're just simply teaching people on how to be better and you know build better habits or do this action and you'll improve your life not actually like okay why is that behavior being driven let's get to the cause and let's actually remove it and i think if people actually were taught and, and educated on how to resolve emotions, you know, from childhood. And you, you can do this with, with children as well, not just adults. The whole world would be completely transformed and in much a much more loving place. And I tried to keep that as short as I could because we could talk into another podcast on that one. <laughs> I was going to say, we could do a full episode just on that topic, but we definitely I, could. <laughs> I couldn't agree with you more though. It's sort of, you know, the missing link is there's not enough preventative you know there's a lot yes. of reactive stuff out there so much yep. education and it's all important but you know it's just sort of servicing the problem it's not getting you know we're not stopping we're not looking at how do we actually prevent this from getting to that place or how can you be more sustainable so no i love that answer Bang uh, what's your personal definition of happiness oh <laughs> Another big question, Nick. Another big question. Throwing some big ones at you here. Definitely. I'm just going to keep it short and sweet. And I think it's feeling love in every single moment of your life. Yeah. And like, that's, it's like, okay, what does that actually mean? Anything that isn't love in your reality, anything that is an unloving feeling, that is not, it's not happiness. Whereas if you... Yeah have a feeling of love in every area and also every moment of every day from the moment that you wake up and if as you said in earlier if there's no noise and all there is is love 
that then that's ultimate happiness. Yeah, so true, so true. What are you most afraid of? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. I love that. Yeah. Um, So the reason why I answer that question is because anything that, uh, so for me, anything that you're afraid of is an, it's, it's fear, which is an unresolved emotion from childhood. So Mm. if I do feel any fear whatsoever in, in the day, which I don't usually feel fear a lot these days, I would tune into what, where that stems from. I would tune into, to, to why I feel fear. And listen, I still have my instinctive fear. So if I saw a lion, I'd be shit scared and I'd run. <laughs> okay. So I still have the fear that I don't think, oh, I'll tune into that. Cause we are, you know, yeah. we're prime, we're primal <clears throat> humans and we, we have instinctive fear, but if there's a fear that I'm feeling in terms of any other thing that's, you know, not a uh, primal fear, then I would be tuning into resolving that emotion. So I fear Great. nothing because I resolve it. So yeah, that's why I said nothing. <laughs> Great answer. Great answer. <laughs> so final one, what are you most proud of? Oh, what am I most proud of? Um, the, the man that I am today. So the, 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 the husband that I, oh God, it's making me emotional just even thinking about it. The husband that I am on uh, and the, the love that I provide for my, my wife, Catrice, the, the type of father that I'm choosing to be for my beautiful little boy and the type of role model that I'm, that I'm showcasing and, and, you know, giving him my undivided love and attention. And also the, the, the type of brother and, and son that I, that I am currently yeah, being, I'm being that. And then the, the service that I provide to, to, to men, to humanity, that, that's, yeah, that's what I'm most proud of because I, I've, you know, had some very unloving behaviors in the past and knowing that they're completely gone and it, it, it yeah, I feel proud every single day. So in fact, that's a beautiful way to, 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 to end. Thank you for asking that question. Cause that really brought me to, to some emotion. <laughs> and I can feel that from you, mate. And it's such a nice way to end it. And, you know, thank you for being so open. And yeah, it's so nice to see and hear everything you're talking about and such a good example that you're setting. And it's a problem for so many men. So as I said earlier, I'm sure so many people listening to this interview right now, they're going to relate to this and take something out of it. So on that note as well, where can we send our listeners if they want to learn more about you. Yeah, amazing. So I'm mostly active on on Instagram. So it's underscore Elliot White. And then you can also find me on Facebook and also all the other social media platforms. So TikTok, YouTube, uh, but mostly Instagram and Facebook is my action. Um, my website, so elliotwhite.com.au, just a little bit more information about me. And then I do also have my own podcast. So that's called the Maskless Man podcast. And that's just me being intimate and just sharing my my story and everything that I, I've moved through. And that that's actually a new platform. I've only just kind of launched that a couple of months ago. So um, yeah, but the, you know, on a day to day basis, mo- mostly Instagram, you can find me on. So uh, yeah, I, if I'd love to connect with anybody that listens to this as well. Amazing. Well, we'll make sure to put all of those links for the for social media, your website, uh, the podcast, we'll have all of those in the show notes. So anyone listening, make sure to check them out. And Elliot, thank you so much for, thank you for making the time, mate. It's been so great to meet you and, you know, love everything you're talking about and and doing. So appreciate it. Oh, well, I appreciate you, Nick, as well. And I just wanted to also honor you, you know, the, the reason why I reached out is because I could feel from a felt sense that you've got an open heart and um, you, you're not in this inauthentic place, which unfortunately a lot of men are, and that's what I'm trying to change. So to have such a beautiful, open conversation, this has been absolutely fantastic. And I really hope that your audience, um, yeah, get something from it. I appreciate it, mate. Well, I'm glad you reached out. Really took a, I took a huge amount out of it, so I'm sure they will as well. And thank you again. Amazing. Thank you. Thanks to Elliot White for joining me today for Move Your Mind. If you'd like to learn more, you can go to nickbrax.com or you can purchase the Move Your Mind book at nickbrax.com book.